Okay, guys, so let's try a couple more examples today. Here we go. State the exact value of tangent of cosecant inverse of three halves. It wouldn't be a bad idea just to put some parentheses there if you want. Let's take a really quick time out because there's something that's fundamental that I want to establish with you guys. So a quick time out. It's just a really quick FYI. Suppose that I gave you a right triangle that looks something like this. Let's say that this is theta. Let's say this is five. Let's say this is 12. And let's say that this is 13. Can we all agree that according to this triangle, the sine, the sine of theta would equal, what sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for that triangle, sine of theta would be 12 over 13. Now, here's what I'm trying to get at. Let me write this down one more time with a little more space. Sine of theta equals 12 over 13, right? So now what I want to do to both sides is I want to take the sine inverse. Check it out. I want to go sine inverse of not just the left-hand side, but also sine inverse of the right-hand side. Now we know what happens. We know that over here, sine inverse knocks out sine. So all that's left is theta equals sine inverse parentheses 12 thirteenths. And if it's okay with you, I'll take left and right and I'll switch the order so that sine inverse of 12 thirteenths equals theta. Now, what exactly was the point of this exercise? Here is the point. Anytime you have the inverse of a trig function, the answer is an angle. I'll say it one more time. The inverse of any one of the trig functions equals an angle theta. It doesn't really matter what this is. So let's write down that fact before we go any further. Time in. Okay, so first I would recommend that we place emphasis on the stuff in the parentheses. So we have cosecant inverse of three halves. But what exactly does that equal? Well, based on the fact that we just established, we know that the inverse of a trig function is going to equal some angle theta. If we write it down again, a little bit smaller this time, I'll give it some space. What I can do to both sides is I can take the cosecant of both sides. So go cosecant of the left and go cosecant of the right because we know that these knock out. Three halves equals cosecant theta. Now I can switch left with right. So I have cosecant theta equals 3 over 2. This gives me the ability to make a picture. So why don't we go to the x and y axis real fast. Now what quadrant should we go to? Well the directions don't say anything about a particular quadrant. So anytime that's the case, just go to quadrant number one. Always go to quadrant one if they don't tell you where to go. So here's our triangle and we discovered that cosecant theta equals 3 over 2, but what exactly does cosecant equal? Cosecant equals hypotenuse over opposite. So your opposite is 2, your hypotenuse is 3, and now let's find the question mark. You can go a squared, b squared, c squared. 
So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared plus 4 equals 9. Subtract the 4, so a equals square root of 5. And that, of course, goes right here. And now that the diagram is complete, we're ready to proceed on to the goal. Now the goal was to find all of this here. So we can go equals tangent parentheses. However, instead of writing this here again, what exactly can replace this? Well, look at the stuff in blue. We know that this here equals theta. So really, just put theta. And then from here, we go straight to the answer. Now recall that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this equals opposite over adjacent. And now if you want, you can type that into your Casio to see if this could perhaps be made simpler. And I believe it does. If you were to type that in, it'll say this for your final answer. And of course you want to box this in. Okay, one more and then I'll let you go. Cotangent of sine inverse of x. Now again, if they don't use parentheses, you don't have to, but it's not a bad idea. Sine inverse of x equals, well again, recall that the inverse of any trig function is an angle theta. So we have this here. And I'll write it down again. And this time, we will take the sine of both sides because we know that these knock out and so we have x equals sine of theta reverse the order why not look at it as x over 1 because you know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse which means that on a right triangle in quadrant number one, because they didn't specify which quadrant, we go to quadrant one. We know that the opposite is x and the hypotenuse is one. And then let's go a squared, b squared, c squared. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we want to find a. So subtract x squared. One squared is one, minus x squared. Square root both sides. And so this is just a. So we have just discovered that this missing side here is square root one minus x squared. The picture is complete. Let's move on to the goal and we'll be done. So this equals cotangent of, now again, what can replace this? Well, this is here which was set equal to theta. So that's theta. And now finish this off from you guys. Theta is here. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So we have the adjacent over the opposite. This cannot be cleaned up and we are done. A really quick comment, notice that for the first problem, the answer was a number. And that's because I gave you a number. Here, the answer had letters because you were given letters. And that's pretty much how that always works. Okay guys, now it's your turn. Please go off and try exit ticket number 16 and we'll play more tomorrow.